Oi, oi. It's been a while, isn't it? But York's four-day Ebor Festival starts this Wednesday. I'm recording this just after two o'clock, so I'm pretty sure it'll be live on YouTube by three o'clock on Monday. How early is that? How lucky are you? But I'll be sharing with you my all my bets for the York four days. Now, we did have glorious Goodwood that's just been gone. I think I did really say that I was going to share some bets. And I was, oh, say sort of intending to, I was intending to. However, I was short playing it, I guess. Didn't have that many bets. Um, so I had an okay, glorious Goodwood week. We actually had a pretty good week, but you don't, probably don't want to hear that. But I didn't share the bets on there because there just wasn't enough of them for me to be getting stuck into. Um, I mean, because I did do okay out of it, it feels almost mean that I didn't put them up. But I'm waffling. The only reason why I'm saying this is, look, I, I said I was going to put them up. The reason I didn't is because I don't think there was enough sort of, yeah, there, there wasn't enough bets that were going out there for me to do it. And a, a few of them were played a little bit later um, towards the race time as well. So it gets difficult when I'm putting this video out. I like to be able to give you enough notice, like now I'm trying to put this out a couple of days before, and then I can update as we go. So in this video, uh, I'm going to tell you about the ones that I've already struck bets on, the ones that I'm intending to strike a bet on, so I can't show you the bear slip for those ones. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, so Tuesday, I will be sharing a video, hopefully a similar-ish time. Um, it'll be hopefully the afternoon, if not the evening, but it'll still be before day one, and I will update you if there's any extra bets or any new things that come out of it. Um, and then when it comes to Wednesday and Thursday, there will be days that I'll be recording videos out for the Friday and Saturday's racing, respectively. Um, and I'll keep updating as the week goes on, if you see what I mean. So I'm committing to the fact that I will be doing a video every day this week for the York's four days. But yeah, it looks real, real good racing. I'm excited about it. I think there's some real good quality in there. Um, and yeah, there's, I think there's a few to get stuck into. So we'll talk about each of the races individually. I'll pull the screen up so you've got the racing post there. So you've got something visually to look at. Um, and I'll also put up some of the, the trendy stuff. I'll, I, can, I can pull it up now. I'll, I'll put a link in the description, right? For GG, I do the cheat sheets. They are really handy to look at some of these races. Now, I'll talk about a couple of bets where I have sort of used the trans angles to get myself away in. Um, typically, for someone like me, if it comes to horse racing and you guys haven't sort of are new to the channel, I, I can, it's not being a snob, but I call it being a snob. I would much rather have a big bet or a, a decent bet in a group race, especially towards the top tier of it, or if it's the jump to the graded races, because I think there's just less question marks and variants and things you need to worry about now with the handicaps you can find horses that are well handicapped but we'll see this week massively and we'll have seen it at goodwood some of the horses i talk about i've actually ran at that meeting too where there might be some hard luck stories and while it's all well and good to get stuck into a few of those you can get paid for your place money it's it's always hard um it's hard for me to want to be a bit big in there. So again, I do record my bets. I've got my profit and losses for the way that I bet and trade. Um, and markedly, I would, I would look, my variance would be a bigger like gap when it comes to handicaps. And as much as I know that long term, if you keep doing things, they will pay out in the end. Um, I don't want to look long term. I don't want to look short term. I'd prefer to look sort of mid term. So a flat season is a flat season. A jump season is a jump season. But still, sort of month on month. I know which big meetings are coming up. I know which big races are coming up. And I know where I really want to be attacking. So waffling out the way, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Make sure you like this video because why wouldn't you? And drop a comment below with whatever your best bet is for any of the days at York or any questions you got from me. And I will make sure that I go through those, reply to each and every single one of you lovely people. Now, let's crack on. Let's present the screen up. As I say, I'll put a link in the description for the cheat sheets, which you can go and click on. Um, the actual pictures that like the cool little thumbnails you can set on your phone haven't been done on those yet, but I'm hoping they get done this week. I can send a message after this to get those done. But if you're doing it for your place port or you want to see the reasoning behind why I pick some stuff, then I've got the last 10 trends within here. For the Judmont and for the Nunthorpe and for the Ebor, I've gone back to the beginning of the century. So there is some sort of changes in there. But I'll just peel this up quickly. I'm not going to reel every single one of these off for every single race, but just to give you a bit of a feel, right, there are some races where I will use this um, to, to help me find a bet, um, and there'll be other ones where I, sometimes I'll, I'll use it maybe after. But when it comes to the sort of groupy type races, right, I've got my I've got my feel of those ones anyway. Um, I might potentially consider these because it might help in knowing whether a price will get bigger or shorter 
uh, aside from what I just think of it. But I will refer to some of these stats that are in here. So again, I'll, I'll get this off the screen so we can have race and post so it looks a little bit better. But just as a quick example, right, like the things like the Judd Mont, which I have done individually as well, look, nine of the last 10 favourites have finished in the top two, five of them are one. We know City Troy's in there. We'll have a look and see how it goes after. But there, there are some races where you can look at all the stats you want, but then sometimes you just you, you don't need to, do you? Because there's certain horses in there. Doesn't mean he's going to win, though, does it? So uh, there's Greg Garn. Right, so York, first race, the Symphony Group handicap. So over five and a half furlong, right? And on those stats there, there's a few in there that... I think would probably alarm people a little bit in the fact that like the, the horses, lots of the horses have run it exactly five and a half furlong, and there are not too many opportunities to do that. Anyway, we've got stuck into a few in this particular race. Um, I feel like it's a bit of an exciting festival for me, so it's one of these that maybe a bit like a Supreme at Cheltenham or like an Ultima handicap. I might have more bets in this than I potentially would in other instances. I'm not intentionally doing that. Um, and I know there'll be lots of people out there that watch this. Again, you may be new thinking, why are you betting multiple horses in a race? It's the way I want to play. If I think horses have got chances and I think I can get a bit of a draw, then I'll do it. If the each way place terms don't really sit in favour of having multiple selections, then I would have to whittle myself down a little bit. But it's like the whole look, holistic way of looking at it, I guess, that the picture comes in here that, look, it's a five and a half furlong handicap. It's the first race of the York Festival. There are going to be questions potentially answered or raised, but you look at Goodwood. You remember that first race that was run there where the horses are on the far side and everyone was like, oh, look at the jockeys. They made a big mistake. In hindsight, they hadn't. So we don't really know what it's going to be, but that's not the reason why I've chosen to go for three. It's just why it would put me off it less. If it was the last race on the Saturday um, and the terms weren't as favourable, then you know I may question if I wanted to bet as many. But anywho, the three we've gone for in here, two of them are big trends tickers, right? Copper Knight's a 10-year-old, so question marks around that one. But 20 to 1, I've backed him. Six places, I've had £10 each way. Now, again, regular viewers will know it's normally like a £6.25 or a £12.50 on these types of bets come sort of 25 point. Uh, 25 pound a point man um but then people have seen as well like i'll have 100 a couple hundred quid each way on something so i've done tens of fives each way because i've also had another bet here i bet three i've had when moon 10 pounds each way 20 to 1 six places now copper night and one night stand are a bit box ticky so i've just had an interest for the sake of it it's 50 pound outlaid in total in the race that's why i've sort of staked as i have again people will probably say well if you're doing a point system across the season why would you be doing all this um it's the way i do it. it's the way I, I like to play it and again, you go back and watch the videos, you still don't do that often. It is what it is, right? Let's not worry. But it's often an eye catcher, this Wen Moon. Um, might be a little bit of an unlucky horse. Six pounds better off with Copper Knight um, and has been in cracking form at York last season. So one of those like seems to get in trouble. What Copper Knight, as I say, was a bit of a trendy type one. Um, and then the fact that Wen Moon falls in behind that. Wen Moon's one that I've been speaking to a mate, George, and he's mentioned that Wen Moon's too big a price, which I do massively agree with. So I bet the three of them. There are six bases up for grabs. So look, I could get all three of them to place, couldn't I? As it stands, when you're betting horses at sixty, to, sorry, twenty to one, and you're getting a fifth of the odds, if one of those three places, then I would turn a small profit on the race. Of course, if one of them wins, I make a tidy sum. I could get a couple of places. There's very, very ways that it could go okay for me, right? So, again, I try to go as risk adverse as I can in terms of where I'm happy sitting with my money, right? So I've chucked fifty quid at the first race. We don't really need to say too much more about that one. Maybe a race in the comments that you guys have actually got a stronger sort of form based opinion on there, but. Um, I'm just being honest. I'm just telling you what I bet. So don't like it. Don't like it. Right. The Acom Stakes. Now, this is one that I've had a bit of a bigger bet on. I've had £75 win on the Liar in Winter. Uh, that would bet 365 straight after the declarations. Hills went 5-2, to two, but I know from experience, if I drive down there, they probably would be 2-1 to one anyway, or might be 9-4. to four. So I could get 75 on my bet 365. So I've had 75 win at 9-4 to four on the Liar in Winter. Now, it's only a one-runner race, right? And I mean by one-runner race in the fact that most of these horses have only had the one run. But the line in winter, I was watching some racing, as I often do. Didn't have a bet in a particular race, but I watched the race that he won last time out. And it was one of those where Aidan O'Brien had a few horses in the race. The line in winter was ridden by Wayne Lord. And, and I looked at him and thought, is he getting a bit outpaced here? And he's like a miler and he's just not going to be good enough to win this race. Or is Wayne waiting a little bit to see if Ryan's horse gets... So, well, if, if Ryan's horse isn't going to win it, will I carry on? And that's not me to say there's anything untoward in there. The way I've worded it sounds like I am suggesting that. But the initial thought was the line went and may have possibly been tapped for a little bit of toe. Um, but that, as I said, that I think there may be a chance that Wayne could have got into him a little bit more, but was maybe educational, right? First one, horses ever having. But he quickened away seriously impressively. Now, 
if he was able to go with him a bit longer, whichever way it spun, right, whether it was him traveling or whether the jockey was holding on to a little bit more than he probably could have done, I think this horse is bound to take a massive step forward from that. And again, this is going to sound a bit mad, but you know how it is with racing. You watch lots of stuff, you see something. That was the type of performance that made me think, like, try, that this is a horse, even to the extent that, like, like could be in the Guineas picture. Now, again, you can look at any post betting and things like that, and you can think, oh, well, it's, like, other people maybe take potentially agree and those types of things. But it was a good enough performance for me to think that I, I will bet that next time or when it goes into better company, which is what's happening here. The field has dwindled quite a bit as well. There's only ruling court to beat, um, who looks nice in his own right. But look, ruling court was an odds on poke, expected to do what he did that day. The line of Winton wasn't like as well fancied, won really impressively, as far as I'm concerned. If the line of winter had been a short price and Ryan Moore had been on board and he won the way that he did, I would argue that these two would be sort of six to four joint favourites. So price is wrong, I think, on this line of winter. I can see him being supported. I'm happy to take it on the chins if ruling court is just a better horse. I wouldn't often want to get overly involved in a race of this nature where you've just got limited experience to go by but as i say i was very taken by the line of winter again you guys would have watched from sort of like a staking perspective 75 quids like a an okay type bet would be sort of kind of guess like three points but if he was one that i was sort of like no one could be confident coming after one run but if he was one that i had a bit more depth and more substance behind him then i potentially could bet more so the rule of me saying that is or the point of me saying that really is that there's only so high I would stake on a once raced horse, especially at this time of the season. However, this would be the upper echelon of that sort of stake. Now, the only way it could have been different is if the field had have held up a little bit and this horse was, say, a seven to two poke, um, or God forbid, a four to one poke, I would have been having a bit each way. I probably would be having something like a hundred pound each way on him at that point. Um, again, when I say these things and you look at the numbers, thinking now about 75 win at a shorter price, it's the field has changed, right? The terms and the conditions have potentially changed now. It is what it is, but I'm just trying to be honest with you guys that like I, I fancy this one. It would be the topper end or the higher end of what I would be willing to stake and risk in a race of this nature. So that does obviously let you guys know that I fancy it, but there's a reason why the stake is sort of capped, I guess, at where it is. So, look, he, he would be my my sort of best bet of the day. Um, but, it, like, there's, there's obviously massive, massive risks attached. And the reason why I'm saying that is, again, I share these videos, share you guys my stakes. I don't want you to look at this and think, oh, he's had a load more on the line in winter, so let's get smashed into him. There may be better stake, like better bets across the week. But from a staking perspective, if you want to join in where I'm doing it, then he would be, I guess, your three-point type one. Right, I've waffled enough on there, just trying to not necessarily cover my bum, but I just want to make sure that people that are watching this are gambling responsibly. And uh, the more I tell you, the more you can either listen or ignore. Now, the great voltage of stakes, I haven't struck a bet in here, but Christ, I want to bet Kim's Gambit in this. Now, from a price perspective, I am hoping that I can get a bit of four... 0.0 or bigger so three to one or bigger on the exchange um and the reason why I'm, I'm sort of thinking that is look los angeles has been supplemented for the race so he's going to be a strong i guess a strong favorite for this king's gambit is stepping up in trip for the first time which i've got no problem with i think he'd be fine with it but those couple of things make me feel like look he's five to two top price at the moment it makes me feel like when we get a bit more liquidity in the market on the exchange i think he will touch over 4.0 and then i suspect these price might come back in a little bit so my ploy with this one um haven't done anything so look, we're not putting in the totals or anything now this would be one that i might be able to update you on tomorrow if i can get in um if not be one i'd be close to the race but he's the type of bet that i'd be looking at having a bet on him at 4.0 plus and then trying to lay him at a point shorter and then just keeping that bet in running on the exchanges so, so let's just say let's go fathead and say we can get 4.3 on him i'd have a, i'm gonna have 100 this is where i'd probably stake it i'll have 100 at 4.3 and then i'd put a lay in at 3.3 so that if he wins I'll get £100 as long as he trades under that price. But obviously, he would trade under that price because he's won. And then if he gets beat, I've, I've clawed my stakes back. So it's kind of like an each-way covering your bum type scenario. And other people might want to keep it a little bit further in. So you might make 50 quid each way and lower the, the, the lay price. Or you might want to lower the lay price even further so that you use the £330 you might be able to win to spin it and get profit either way in the result. But from my perspective, because I'm trying to do it from, like a, I guess, like a safety thing, I think there's a lot of boats in this race, basically. Los Angeles was backed for the derby on the basis that the ground was getting soft. 
This is good to firm ground. Yes, there might be bits of rain about or whatever, but this is going to be faster than a derby type ground. And yes, that might help him get the trip because in that Irish race in the Curragh, he was sort of holding on at the end, wasn't he? But I don't really know how much to trust that form. I still don't really know how much to trust the derby form. We'll find out from City of Troy, but we won't get that information until after. Um, whereas King's Gambit ran against his elders. I know Passenger was supposedly not working well before the race. And then had the cannon bone injury that was mentioned after. But like Alf Lader's run well. That's against the elders. And he had to sort of do his donkey work, King's Gambit, in there. Look, the race at Ascot, it was an eye catcher. He will, I think he'll see this trip out nice. I think Illinois is a bit of a dog. Um, I just think that King's Gambit getting a few pounds from him or the five pounds he gets from Los Angeles. I think he's the bet in the race. I fully expect that he'll trade two to one or shorter in running. Um, so again, people might argue, well, will not you bet him now at the nine to four? There's just not enough juice in there. So from a risk perspective, I'm not convinced certainly that he will win, but I think he'll go pretty close and, you know, I, I want to bet accordingly. So I could just have a bet to win, could have a say a 25 pound win and just leave it as that. So the, the loss goes down and could make a bit of money, but just explaining how I'm doing it. That's my idea of what I'll do. So whether I get that price or not is a different story. If I don't get the price, I probably won't play him or I might talk about him in a different capacity. But if that happens, I'll update you in tomorrow's video. Um, and I'm aware I'm talking a little bit more than I would normally do about some of the bets. So if you're bored with that, then you can skip on to the next race. I've done, I haven't put the chapters in, but you can just, you move yourself on, can't you? But if you want to listen to me waffle, then just sharing a bit more. Again, if you're new to the channel, then this wouldn't be the typical way I might do it, but I do like to waffle. I do like to try and be thorough, and I'm I'm excited. This is the decent week. We've got four days, some good betting opportunities, and we've obviously got a few quid going out day one. Right, Judmont, I've quickly, loosely touched on the fact that City of Troy is in here. Um, it's a it's a hard one to want to take him on, really, isn't it? The Eclipse run didn't really inspire a lot of people, I don't think. I'm still questioning the Derby form in terms of him. Um, sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? But I, I, I don't know if he's a weapon or not, but I don't really feel I have enough evidence to suggest you've got any right really taking him on. Now, I'm saying that again from a price perspective type stuff. It was 1.72 on the machine before final declarations. If he'd have been an odds on poke, I'd have been tempted to look at a, re a relatively low risk as far as I'm concerned, um, like place lay or two places lay. Because there's lots of horses that are in behind there, right? And he, it could be that if he's... If he doesn't run so well, he might be minded um, like he was in in the Guineas. But he's not going to be the same sort of scenario in there. Like they, they, they will be trying. I don't think he'll get done head bobbed, but who knows he could. The, the long and the short of it is I think the bookies have got this priced up right about bang on. I, I would probably be so, somewhere on the side of a coin flip of he could be really good or he might not. Um, sounds like quite an amateur thing to say and quite a lazy thing to say when a horse is that sort of price. But I think that's what we want. of The feature race of the first day and one of the better races of the whole entire week it's tilted on a knife edge now there are three places up for grabs i don't put it personally see any value in doing an each way bet because he could be the winner and you're just playing for place money and there's not enough juice in any of those of course there are betting without markets but then again i think i've got as much of a quandary of seeing those behind and stacking up who would be best of the rest to win this race as much as i have the quandary of well city of troy could be very good or he could not so I would, I'm going to just fully sit this race out. I sort of came in with the intention of trying to look for a way to lay City of Troy, which again, I know would offend and annoy a lot of people, but that would be more, I guess, trade in perspective. Like if he was, like I say, the 1.72 he was in the week, which he's not now, he's about five to four on the exchange. I would have looked at that and said, oh, he's going to get bigger. So I might be able to lay him and then bet him and do those types of things. So yeah, I'm not really getting involved in that race. If you want to back City of Troy, then I don't think he's a bad price. Now he's about five to four poke. Um, if you like him, like I say, I'd say I, it's hard, isn't it? But I, I would be 50-50-ish. It uh, doesn't mean I'd want to bet him at 50-50, but it's kind of coin flippy. You're not doing anything wrong, are you? If you're not betting him odds on, I don't think. But obviously, you make your own minds up. You do what you want. Uh, in the... Losing my trail of thought here. In the stairs handicap. Now, we have got a bet in here, which I would consider for me as a handicap bet. It's an all right fancy. It is only 25 each way. And I say only. That's not to be fat-headed and be like, oh, look at me having 50 put in a race. I'm saying only 25 pound each way because I want to emphasize as well, like how much I like the horse or how much I like the chance or something. So there's five places up for grabs in this one. Stairs handicap. So it's over two miles. Knightswood's been an eye catcher on multiple races this season. And it may be that is the type of horse that he is. Runs really well behind horses, likes getting stuck, likes doing those bits. But 
The journey with Knightswood starts a little bit back. Four runs back, he ran behind Iron Lion. I bet Iron Lion that day. Um, ran well, but I watched it and thought that Knightswood was a little bit unlucky. And that was one of those where, you know, when you're going for a bit of a patch and you're worried about variants and thinking, I've had so many losers that I should have had winners. Iron Lion felt like one of those that I got on the right side of that day. Like, I mean, that he won. I think he still deserved to win, but I actually looked at Knightswood and thought, cool, I wouldn't have been shocked if that horse sort of got up and it would have made me feel a little bit like, Ugh. but he's five pounds better off with him now. So that's a start. And, and the horses are in the race together. They're both 10 to one, right? So even that as a starter is wrong for Knightswood in comparison, but it may be that Iron Lion will be a drifter and Knightswood will short on, which is what I think will happen. He was an eye catcher last time out. Um, when he was just boxed in and again might be his one but he, he ticks a lot of the boxes of this race as well as the fact of the form stuff so i touched on that at the beginning where i like to look for some form and if they tick the box as well it helps he ticks most boxes apart from he hasn't been here before and he didn't finish top three last time out but go back and watch that race and tell me that he would not have won that day or at least been top three um and you can have an argument with me if you want to have an argument but go go back and watch that one because i think it's enough to make you want to bet this horse He's got to be in the frame is the long and the short of it. Now, there are, I know everyone's going to say, oh, Gordon Elliott sent one over, but it doesn't really fit the profile of it. And I know people say that doesn't really matter, does it? But I wouldn't be 100% confident that Samui is going to be first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I don't know where the hell that horse will finish, being brutally honest. Knightswood will be in the top five as confidently as I could be in a handicap and a flat race and all those types of things in there. So... Fifth of the odds, five places. I've had £25 each way. He is top price 10 to 1. Um, I've had to fiddle a little bit to get this. 17 to 2 is what Betfair is, which is where I could have just had the lot on. Um, I can get £20 in Coral. So I've had a little bit on Coral at 9s and then the rest on at 17 to 2. So for the purpose of this, we'll say I've bet him at 17 to 2. I don't, I, I do, I would prefer obviously the 10 to 1 about him, but I think he's going to be nibbled. If I can cash that one out and get him a little bit bigger, um, I'll, I'll do that at some point. But like, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm sat on that one. Let's just say it's in and around nine to one, isn't it? So I've had 25 each way on him. I fully expect that this horse will be placing. So I'm confident I'm going to get my money back and a small bit of profit at least. Um, and I think he's got a proper, proper, proper chance of winning this one. Um, I, I, like The great Bedwin as well was close to him. Watch the race back. Great Bedwin gets everything he wants in that final closing stages. Knightswood doesn't. Knightswood will reverse that form with a clear run and the price discrepancy is too big. I expected Knightswood to be shorter, really. Like I expected him to to be the six to one sort of poke in there and i still would have bet the same probably i still would have had 25 each way um but i, I yeah i would have felt a little bit like i could have done with a bigger price so i'm very happy with the price is very happy with how much i've staked on him and again you might be crying in the comments why am i not having more and if i'm so confident he's going to place or why am i not smashing him in the place market alone i just would cap these types of races in my sort of experience that there will you'll net you'll very rarely ever see me saying to you guys, I'm having £100 each way in a handicap of this nature. It's just not going to happen. I, I, I like to have a bet in this one because I feel fairly confident there's a lot of dead wood in here, but we'll see how the result comes after, right? If this horse doesn't even place, you'll see why I've tempered enthusiasm in there. But there are better opportunities to bet. Um, it, is, it is just what it is. But I do I do really like him. I think if, I think he's I think he's got a proper chance, as I've said. But again, staking accordingly. Um as much as I'm being bullish about him, don't go, don't go mad. Go mad if you want. Do what you want. It's your money. The Phillies handicap. Um, it's not a race that would interest me in the slightest, any way, shape, or form. There's only been a few renewals of it. Even looking at the recent trends, there's only four renewals, but a few of them have been quite highly rated. Now, look, Design has won at the last couple of twice. They've they pulled the SP figure in and out, but it was eleven to one, five places, a fifth of the odds with Skybet Designer. If you could get on with Skybet. I'd have some of that. So I'd only be having like a £12.50 each way on designer. I can't get that. I can get the 10 to 1, 50 odds uh, for first four with, with Bet365. So I might look at that. I think with the long break, the wind up, the first time tongue tie, the fact that it's won it before, I can just see it being a bit of a shortener. And I think this horse could place, but it is a potential value loser. Um, and, you know, she could really bomb given the fact she's had such a big break. So. Again, it would be almost betting for the sake of betting in there. So I, I haven't done anything on that yet. But if you can get, if you've got Sky Bet account, you can get those those extra places. Then, well, that's an absolute no brainer. The nursery handicap to close the card. There is one I I, I want to bet in here. Um, but again, nursery handicaps, not the same as an an Aiken, but similar to that. We don't have a whole bunch to go on, and a, a fair bit would be a little bit of speculation. But um, quite often this race has been won by horses drawn in the in the bottom half. Um, I think even as low down as like, is it still six and lower or have I is that got that mixed up another race? Um, it's P 
PL ourself. Yeah, so seven of the last 10 minutes have run the bottom half, six were still six or lower. So 17 runners, so like eight or lower would be ticking that box. One I like is Rakuni's drawn in nine, so not too far off of it. Safi Osborne takes, <coughs> excuse me, Safi Osborne takes the ride from Charles Bishops, who's ridden it the last twice after he's been gelded and hasn't really given the horse a real hard time of it. But Penelope run at Windsor was carried left, which wouldn't have helped. And then the finish lost a couple of places. The last time at the maiden was always going to win. Um, one with a touch in hand, I believe. Again, kindly handled. I think Safi Osborne will get to the front. I think this horse can sort of potentially hope to hold on. 20 to 1, five places, 17 runners. I feel happy enough that I've had £12.50 each way on this one. Um, with better freezes five because I can get on with them. The 20s, I'm fairly happy with. I don't think that price will shorten significantly because it is a little bit punty, but just looks like a horse that I think has a little bit potentially in hand. And again, yeah, I'm not going to get overly excited about it, but the price is way too big. I, I'd have this horse shorter, um, but no real substance to why that might be the case. So a bit of a weird one to end on there, right? But as I say, I will be back for... Oh, Gone for a weird screen. Be back um, every single day for the bets for the week. Let me know in the comments below what you fancy or if you agree or disagree with anything I've said. Like the video, make sure you're always subscribed and I will see you guys again tomorrow.